In this video, I'll demonstrate how I make scabbards and handles for Japanese-style swords. This video contains footage from four different scabbard and handle projects, for swords of different sizes and shapes, using two different kinds of wood. Poplar and alder are the two types of wood I prefer for scabbard making. I've ordered the footage so it looks like sequential shots of a single project, but if you look closely you may notice that it isn't. I begin by cutting a 1x4 board into two pieces. It's very important that the board be as straight and flat as possible so that the two pieces meet up nice and flat like this. If the board is warped, it'll be impossible to chisel the groove for the sword or to glue the two halves together. I center the sword on one board and sketch a line around it. Then I carefully mark and measure certain landmarks of the outline so I can transfer them to the other side of this board and the back and front of the other board. Then I carefully trace the profile of the sword on both sides of both boards. Next I identify which surfaces will be the internal surfaces of the scabbard and I score a deep cut along the outline using a utility knife. And then I begin chiseling out a groove for the sword. Here I use the Saya chisels I made in a previous video. The groove should be a millimeter or so deeper and wider than the blade, so the blade doesn't bind when it goes in and out of the scabbard, except in the area of the habaki. The habaki should fit with a gentle friction fit and bind in the mouth of the scabbard. Once the groove has been chiseled into the two matching surfaces, the two boards are glued together. I'm no master of wood gluing, so I don't show that process here. I recommend that you watch a good woodworking video to learn how to do that. Now I prepare the wood for the handle. Once again, I trace a line around the profile of the tang.
and I chisel out the groove where the tang will go. Unlike with the blade, the tang should fit snug in the handle without any movement, so extra care must be taken in chiseling the groove to make sure the tang fits perfectly. Here's what the scabbard looks like with the two halves glued together. And here's what the handle looks like with the two halves glued together. I like to use a bandsaw to rough out the shape of the scabbard, using as my guide the profile of the sword that I sketched on the outside of the boards at the beginning. I also rough out the shape of the handle with a bandsaw. Here's a scabbard fresh from the bandsaw. Now I finish the scabbard using the planes I made in a previous video. For the outside of the curve, I use a flat-soled plane. For the inside of the curve, I use a round-soled plane. Once the scabbard is planed as perfectly as possible, I sand it smooth. When using sandpaper, I place tape over the mouth of the scabbard to prevent abrasive particles from getting inside the scabbard and later scratching up the blade. I also shape the handle with planes.
And here's a finished handle core, sized perfectly for the metal fittings. This is the conclusion of this video on scabbard and handle making. In my next video I'll show the finished sword, scabbard, and handle as well as the handguard and all the other fittings and parts. If you've enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. If you'd like to support this channel so I can continue making videos, please consider purchasing some of my knife making steel. Links in the description. See you next time.